Happy June 5th or whatever day in June or August or September, whenever you listen to this. Happy whatever day it is to you, my possum <laughs> friends. We are we're going through OTAs right now. Some some major camp news is coming out. Yeah, it's just that season. It's just that time of year where I'll save it for my uh what I'm gonna say about the Denver Broncos. But it's camp news season, guys, and we are offensive points, and we are going to cover the AFC West today. It's Billy and I. Josh is on fatherly duties tonight. So Josh is also rocking. taking part. Is also taking part in OTAs. It's optional when he just shows up to do these podcasts. I feel like you know, Joe. Yeah. These aren't mandatory. This isn't mandatory podcast season. This is optional podcast season. Apparently, yep. Hey, we did come in second place in golf last night, so and we won a skin. So the possums nice. are representing on the golf course. Another thing of news uh, is I'm going undercover, my possum friends, and I'm volunteering at the Wildlife Nature Center, Wildlife Rescue Center, and I am living among the possums. And I learned something that I'm going to pass on to you. Possums need two bowls of water in their cage because they poop in water sources. So go out there, possums, and poop in water sources. Well, fair enough, Joe. I think that is called a toilet in human world terms. So I, I, I think we maybe already have that covered. Um, but, you know, I, I appreciate your, your suggestion there. Just another um, thread we share with our possum kin. Yeah, no kidding. Um, my shout out today is going to be for the Oklahoma softball team going for their fourth Women's World Series in a row championship um this team's not as good as the past year's teams but joe you know four times winning a title four times in a row is insane you know jordan didn't do that you know he no, probably could have but he went to baseball but you know the similar you know gonna go for a fourth championship that is quite awesome honestly excellence should be recognized go oklahoma softball Thanks, Joe. I appreciate you saying that. And the Battle Hawks are in the playoffs, and they got a home game this weekend. And, of course, I've got to close at work, so I won't be there, sadly. You should quit. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, I don't think I will, but I do appreciate you suggesting that I, uh, you know, take my fandom seriously. Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure you're on track, man. I appreciate that. All right, well, let's get to a little bit of news before we get to our preview of the AFC West. We had two massive extensions. Um, we'll start with one that's actually, I, I, you know, going to mean some things, and the other one's kind of just like, I don't know, pretty nice pat on the back. But Justin Jefferson, four years, $140 million, $110 million guaranteed. Joe, when you saw that drop on the timeline, what was your first thought? Good for him. He absolutely deserves it. The Vikings had to make the move, and you nailed it perfectly on the head in our group chat when you said, well, this just means the Cowboys really screwed up. It did, and I actually put that on Twitter, and I've gotten feedback that, like, well, what were the Cowboys going to do? Sign him to that contract before the Vikings did when it wasn't uh, there was no precedent for it? And I'm like, well, there's a president president now. And if I was CD Lamb, I'm not taking less than that because you know you want to be you want to get the headline of, you know, highest paid wide receiver or like, you know, this contract's the largest in NFL history for a wide receiver. You want that, so they got to do. They're going to have to do something to make that a uh, a headline. And you could have done it before Minnesota, but you chose to do it after. So they're kind of stuck because they got to pay Dak supposedly. And now they're going to have to pay Lamb $35 million a year, which is insane for that team the way it's constructed currently because they're going to have more people coming up for contracts here pretty soon. Um, Joe, what do you what do you think is going to happen with Dallas? I know this is a Justin Jefferson thing, but what else can we say? He's, a, he's the best receiver in the league right now, deserves the money. But for Dallas' the situation, what are they going to do? What does this mean for them? They're between a rock and a hard place, man. They're going to have to figure out which finger to cut off, basically, because is it going to be Dak? Probably not. Is it going to be Lamb, your quarterback's best receiver? Probably not. It's probably going to end up being Micah Parsons, and that's going to be a huge blow to that team because that man is, is 
absolutely deserves to be paid and you have to make a decision on it sooner rather than not. Yeah. Well, see, you say it's not going to be Dak. I think it might be Dak. I think it might be Dak because any quarterback that goes into that situation is going to be fine with lamb, but Dak, you know, what, you know, is he good? Is he not good? Where is he at? Do we feel good about him? Are we trusting him? I don't know if they necessarily feel that way. So honestly, might be time to, to start with a, a fresh, cheap quarterback and go from there, possibly. Yeah, I could absolutely see that. I mean, to go away from the Cowboys for a second, I just think this shows that Howie Roseman is playing chess and not checkers. He got both of his dudes locked up for after Jefferson's contract. You know, pretty good deal uh, for two stud wide receivers. Miami got Waddle done. I think this means that Tyree Kill, you're going to have to do something with his contract. I'm sure he's going to want something a little bit out of this. I mean, this just kind of resets everything and is going to make guys like Higgins and Ayuk and, and everything else going on a whole lot more difficult. I agree completely. The market has been completely reset. And while Dallas is in the crosshairs right now, all of the wide receivers that got in just before that were also looking at Detroit, Joe. They got Amon Ra locked up uh, for just under that 35 number, which is going to be massive for him for the next four years and for them because they got the quarterback locked up. They got the wide receiver. They have a basically, you know, they have a rookie running back, a running back that's not necessarily taking up much time. You got a rookie tied in. Like they got all of their pieces in place. So if you got in under the gun, then you're fine. But the ones that waited too long and now let Justin Jefferson ruin things, uh, well, you're, you're going to be uh, figuring some things out, I guess, Joe. Yeah, no, for sure. And the Vikings had to do it. I mean, they he is their offense. I'm, I'm really high on Aaron Jones this year. We're hoping that Jordan Addison takes the next step and Hawkinson heals okay. But Justin Jefferson is that offense. You got your quarterback. You got to get him his guy. So they had to do it. I agree. Okay. And then the other one that happened, Christian McCaffrey getting the good old pat on the back. Joe, when people tell you running backs don't matter, let me tell you about the San Francisco 49ers giving $19 million a year to Christian McCaffrey. It was a two-year extension for $38 million. Um, so it will be $19 million a year. Alvin Kamara is the next closest to that with $15 million a year. But <clears throat> I seem to think that the 49ers are in the Super Bowl – every year and they have a running back joe so could the running back be potentially back or are the rest of the teams still going to try to take cost cuts and they're not going to try to get the mccaffrey unicorn like what do you think that this means for running backs going forward uh, i think it means that running backs that are stud running backs are going to demand their money and i think the teams that are unwilling to pay that are going to continue with the running back by committee We've seen it be effective. It absolutely sucks for fantasy football, and it really has devalued the position completely. So I think the trend continues, but I think these guys that are actual studs are going to start demanding more money. Maybe they go somewhere else, sign somewhere else. So I don't know if the market necessarily changes, <clears throat> but if you have a guy like Christian McCaffrey, obviously you have to pay him, and he is their offense. I'm sorry. I mean, they got a lot of good guys. Brock Purdy is fine. Brock Purdy is not who he is without Christian McCaffrey. That offense doesn't yeah. click the same way. So, yeah, and then you still got Brock Purdy, who's basically getting paid in, you know, just the change out of the couch cushions. So, while you have him under that, you might as well lock up McCaffrey for two more years while uh, you wait until you give that big extension to Purdy potentially. So, yeah, I don't think it changes much for the running back position, which kind of sucks because you're like, oh, okay, well, running backs are going to get paid, right? Like that's going to happen now, probably not. People still think they're going to have Mahomes come into their team and change everything. Um, I think a lot of people's mistake is that they think that their quarterback is Mahomes and he's going to be able to take them to the title when in all reality there's only one Mahomes and there's only one McCaffrey. So you either have the best running back in the league or you have the best quarterback in the league that doesn't need a running back. In a lot, you know, we have 30 teams that are in the middle of that, and I, I think that we maybe should start paying running backs a little bit more, but I can also see the argument of, you know, why, <laughs> why yeah. they're not as useful. But I don't know. It just depends on your team I, makeup. And I think a lot more teams should be running back heavy rather than trying to trust Tua, Dak, like all these teams that like the quarterbacks are kind of mid and your entire team 
is alive because of the quarterback that's pretty good, but not really good. When you could have a running back that's really good. Yeah. No, it takes a whole team. And I got, I really hope we can get back to the Emmett Smith days and the Jamal Charles days. And the, we knew who was getting the rock and, you know, there were 20 good running backs. We loved it, but I don't, I don't think we're getting back there anytime soon. My biggest thing is we know Brandon Ayuk's upset. Does this just create a massive chasm between the team and Brandon Ayuk when you give McCaffrey that kind of money? Obviously, the money is warranted for McCaffrey, but you got Ayuk over here asking for an extension, asking to be traded, and it's not happening. We just saw that money sent to Christian McCaffrey. I don't know how they would afford to sign Ayuk at this point to what he wants. Yeah, no, I've, I've heard it described as potentially the Hunger Games this year between the two receivers there, whether, whether Debo or Ayuk has the better year. That's the receiver that's going to end up getting paid out of all this, which, by the way, terrible idea. Don't do that. So I guess we'll see uh, what happens. But, yeah, if you're Ayuk, I don't know how you can't be like, can we pay me too before we have to pay Purdy? Like, if we pay me now, we don't have to worry about, you know, it later on or anything, but – at the same time, Shanahan doesn't really care. I feel like he thinks he can win with anything. He thinks he can win with whatever's thrown out there. McCaffrey's clearly the piece that he thinks that they can't lose. So I thought it was pretty telling, you know, that they're going to give an extension when the contract's not even up when they have wide receivers that need to get paid already. So I think that kind of made, you know, made things pretty obvious where the priorities lie. Yeah, and I agree with that 100%. My biggest thing is if it is a Hunger, Hunger Games scenario, is this the year to invest in San Francisco 49ers <laughs> wide receivers? Maybe, but I, how can – you know, if it, it's still Shanahan's scheme, so if he's not going to scheme them the ball, then you're going to get one of them in the doghouse because they're chirping on the sideline about not getting more uh, targets thrown their way. So it He's going to throw the ball bust. to – He's going to have Purdy throw the ball to McCaffrey and Kittle and be like, you guys did not and catch Juwan anything Jennings. Here. Kick rocks. <laughs> yep. We're going to do Ricky Parasol. Like, it's going to be all just whoever else other than those two. Because he's like, well, you know, we don't need you. We got Ricky Parasol over here. Um, but, yeah, very strange. Um, one last thing. I sent it to Josh. It's not really a news story yet. I sent it to you and Josh. Uh, it's not really a news story yet. But Nick Chubb did say today at OTAs that he has no definitive timetable. And while Josh in our group chat said, like, well, this is was to be expected, I don't know. I don't know if I expected it. I thought maybe there would be like a, oh, he'll, you know, we're, we're working towards week four or, you know, the doctors are telling me maybe week six. I thought maybe we would get some something from a message point, but like saying no timetable at all does kind of make me think this is a lost year when Josh seems to think that was the plan the whole time. To me, it happened in week two. Like I kind of thought we would have an idea by now of when it's coming back, but what did you think of that? Or did you, agree with Josh. No, I, I've been agreeing with Josh this whole time. I mean, I, I think that there's no way he had the exact same injury he had in Georgia. That's not an easy recovery to come back from the first time. The second time at his age, tearing all of those. I mean, you're looking at a two year recovery. We know ACLs take two years to recover from now yeah. to, to where the guy's back to normal. So yeah, I mean, he might get in there like week six and play, you know, 10 snaps and 12 in week seven. And well, I, th I feel like if he was coming back week six, he would say we have a timetable for when I'm going to start doing this. But like to say no timetable makes me think this year's probably out completely maybe, or at the end, maybe if they're making a playoff run or something, maybe that would like, even if he said that, like if he said, you know, it might be late in the season, but if we're making a push, I'll come back like something like that. But to say no timetable makes me think there might maybe not even think about playing him this year at all, which that's a scary proposition if you have him in dynasty. Cause I mean, you probably already were nervous anyway, but to hear that there's absolute, maybe absolutely no way he's playing. Gosh, you're stuck with a sunk cost asset there. Yep. The sunk cost policy. I mean, you can try to trade him for what you can get. I would recommend doing that. I know people have been trying to trade me Nick Chubb and I was like, no, sir, not interested. One guy even asked for a first round pick. He was a 26 or a 27. I can't remember. Like, absolutely not. You know, if Nick Chubb comes back, that's awesome. But I think the big thing that we need to start diving into is what Brown's running back is going to be the most valuable this year. Is it Dante Foreman? Because clearly, Jerome Ford, I mean, I think he had the highest percentage of stuffs last year. And that line's pretty good. 
I know the offense wasn't good in general. We got DTR and everything throwing the football, but yeah. I don't think Jerome Ford's your answer. We got Naeem Hines coming back from his jet ski accident, also an ACL injury. And then you got Dante Foreman. You just got a whole mix of guys there. I wouldn't be surprised if a guy like Smaj P. Ryan ends up getting cut, ending up on the Browns too. I, I don't know what you do. Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, I think it's probably Jerome's Ford, Jerome Ford's backfield to start with. But, I mean, we saw last year, like you said, other than Alexander Madison, I don't remember a, court, or a running back that had a similar like, oh, he's – oh, okay, he's two yards. Great. Awesome. And then he cool busts off like a 60-yard run out of nowhere. And you're like, yeah, oh, exactly. Okay. Like, <laughs> it was he was a nightmare to have in DraftKings. If you put him in any of your DraftKings lineups, you definitely were like, why does he only have point two in the third quarter? And then he ended up like a 90-yard touchdown or something. You're like, oh, okay, well, it ended up working out, I guess. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just didn't love, I didn't love that language of like no timetable. I just don't like no timetables. Don't give me the no timetable. If it, if it's gonna be week four, say we're shooting for you know week four to six. If it's gonna be late in the season, say like, oh, well, it's gonna be a little bit later in the season, but we have a plan. Or no timetable means probably not 2024, which scary, scary stuff. Um, it's refreshing right. not to hear the I'm in the best shape of my life and I'll be ready for week one though, because that's well, he just did say I am stuff. where I need to be, which I I mean that could mean anything. I mean yeah, like a gunshot victim goes to the hospital, they are where they need to be. Like okay, well, good call. That's uh, exactly <laughs> where. Yeah, you're right. You know, you are where you need to be after that happens. So yeah, I, where it, it is kind of you know weird language, but it is what it is. All right, Joe, let's get on to the AFC West Super Bowl champions division. Uh, let's start out with some of the bad teams first. So let's start with Joe. Go with the Broncos. Where, where are we going at in Denver? Um, we'll see. We'll see. It's a it's a year for the Broncos that we could see some progression or regression. I mean, honestly, for a team that narrowly missed the playoffs last year at eight and nine, the expectations are super low this year. They do have a pretty brutal schedule, but honestly, there's abundant value on this team. So I'm going to dive into that a little bit. Um, by the way, tell me we're in camp news season without saying it. Zach Wilson is taking the starter reps for the Denver Broncos right now. Um, do with that what you will. Zach Wilson is not going to be the starter. I know Sean Payton comes out and says, oh, we really like Zach Wilson. You know, he's he's got the talent. He, you know, we're going to work him with the ones right now. It's not true. Bo Nix is your starter. Sean Payton loves Bo Nix. I mean, this dude played 61 games in college, and he had an absolutely insane 77% completion percentage last year, just last year. He had the highest completion percentage in all of college football. I know he's older at 24, um, but Sean Payton has a plan for him, and honestly, I'm super high on this dude and the prospects for his future. He's currently QB 31. He's going 212 overall. So if you invest in a Lamar Jackson or a Josh Allen or anything, you can – Add Knicks at the end of your bench or in a two QB. I think he's very serviceable. So I actually think Bo Nix is a pretty solid quarterback. And I'm going to tell you right now, he is going to be your starter this year. So on the running backs, Javante Williams is going as RB 31. And it's pretty consistently in the eighth and ninth round where we're seeing it. We knew he blew out every ligament in his knee in 2022. And he had a really insane recovery to be ready for week one of last year. But like we said before, these injuries usually take two years before they're back to full health. He had his lowest yards per carry last year and lowest reception total last year. And the Broncos are a top five run blocking offensive line. So I think that Jamal Williams or Javante Williams, I'm sorry, I got my wrong Williams here. This is your, well, this is one of your league winners for 2024. Uh, like I said, the schedule is pretty <laughs> tough, but Bo Nix mm -hmm. supported Bucky Irving. Bucky Irving had 56 receptions last year in the college offense, so we know he's going to dump it down to Javante Williams. We know the line's really good. I think they were top five in the league for run blocking, so I love Javante Williams this year, and at that price, he'll probably be on every one of my teams at this point. Um, Samaj P. Ryan, probably going to get cut. His usage was kind of strange at the end of last year when Jaleel McLaughlin came in, so I'm assuming Samaj P. Ryan's going to get cut. If he doesn't, he has no value. I mean, I wouldn't be investing in him at all. And then Jaleel McLaughlin, kind of the change of pace back. I don't think he provides any real fantasy output this year, especially after the addition of Audric Estime coming from Notre Dame. Estime is going as RB67. 
He's a big bruising back, which they do not have on this roster. He's taller than Javante. He's heavier than Javante. And for a team that has a really good line, they only scored, I think, six or five red zone rushing touchdowns last year. Estimate is your answer to that. He had 18 touchdowns for the Irish last season. So I think at least if you draft Audric Estimate, you're going to get a goal line back that's going to score some touchdowns for you. He could even start to eat in Javante's workload throughout the season if Javante does not prove to be the guy. Like, I think he will be. But so get Javante. And then the wide receivers. Sean Payton thinks that Cortland Sutton is going to make it to minicamp. Um, I doubt it. I doubt it. I think <laughs> I think he's going to hold out. And by all means, he absolutely should. I mean, he's the big dog on this offense, so he should get his money. He actually had the second best fantasy season of his career last year. That was the 10 touchdowns that he had. Um, but he's going as wide receiver or yeah, wide receiver 49. Last year he finished as wide receiver 35. Anything not named Zach Wilson will get him more points than Russell Wilson did. Just want everyone to know that. So Cortland Sutton is a real value in drafts at the moment. Uh, assuming he doesn't hold out into the season, which I doubt he I know he's got money. He doesn't have that much money to hold out into the season. Then you get to Marvin Mims, Josh Reynolds, Troy Franklin, and Tim Patrick. They're all going to kind of mix in behind him. Troy Franklin was pretty much a consensus top five wide receiver going into rookie drafts. Uh, his fourth round selection is kind of wild, causing him to drop a ton. But he already has the chemistry with Bo Nix. And he's been shown out in camp. I know it's camp news, but the chemistry seems to be going strong there. Tim Patrick, I think, would be the number two, but after his, I mean, he had an ACL the year before and then an Achilles last year. I'm not putting too much stock into him, so I'm not going to recommend drafting him too much. Marvin Mims should step in as, should take a step in year two, I would assume. And then I think what, what's going to happen is you're going to go into the season with Sutton as the X, Troy Franklin as your starting Z receiver, and then Tim Patrick will be healthy, but I honestly think Josh Reynolds is going to be in the slots, uh, Mims in more of deep situations. We're just going to have to see how this unfolds. Uh, behind Corlin Sutton, I would say take your shot on Troy Franklin, where he's going. But I don't know. Sutton's really the only guy for me. And then Greg, unhealthy Dulcich, had foot surgery recently to go along with the reoccurring hamstring injuries. We know that this dude can be special, but – Again, the injuries, I'm not really believing in it until I see it. If you take Laporta or Kelsey early, you could probably take Dolchis as your last pick. I don't think he's that high on anyone's list. Um, but we know Sean Payton likes him. And then Sean Payton goes out, and he's been hyping up Lucas Kroll. So that's a name to monitor if Dolchich can't get going this year. When you get to the defense, I think Brandon Jones is going to be an absolute stud at safety. They signed him to pretty good money. I know health has been a concern for him. And then a guy I'm really monitoring is Jonas Griffith. I think he has a, a chance to start next to Alex Singleton. I don't believe in Cody Barton. He was kind of okay his entire career. So they like Jonas Griffith, and I think he could step in as your LB2 in Denver and actually put up a pretty good IDP season. Billy, what do you think about all that? Um, Just a few notes. Um it's crazy what Audric Estime did at the combine because, of course, he ran slow. But what other famous Notre Dame alum ran slow at the combine was Kyron Williams, and everybody gave up on him. And now you have Audric Estime basically doing the exact same storyline um, and ending up in Denver. So I definitely think this could be Audric, Audric Estime's backfield by the end of the season if Javante is not working out. I mean, but we'll see. I, I you know. I do think you're right with the like Javante's price currently is basically like free, but I think like the best ball community right now is probably thinking like, well, I could take Javante and maybe it works out or I could take all your estimate basically for free. And then I may get a starter by the end of the season. We'll have to kind of see closer to the season, what they're actually thinking there. Um, but there's just a lot of weapons here. I do agree with your Samaj P Ryan take why he left Cincinnati. I know there was like maybe a little bit more money, but like, Cincinnati he was needed there, and why he left, I, I will never understand. Um, but he definitely could be cut. I think you're right there because kind of a redundant skill set with some of these other players that are on the team. And I also do agree with your Troy Franklin take. Why he fell to sixth round, I have no clue. Um, he, he We had issues with Troy Franklin, but like not drop to day three, sixth round issues with him. So 
Like, I, that was kind of a crazy thing to watch on draft night, and I definitely think he belongs in the starting lineup. I get the Josh Reynolds thing, um, but I definitely think Troy Franklin could make his way there. So, yeah, no, I think you're right about that. And it sucks that Drew Sanders is already out for this defense. They just cannot catch a break. They really can't. I mean, they have some pretty solid pass rushers on this team. It'll be really like Zach Allen, Baron Browning, Nick, Nick Benito. There's a bunch of really good pass rushers on this team. We'll have to see who kind of shakes out with them. Uh, but I think it's an exciting team to watch this year, and uh, hopefully they take the next step. I just I like Troy Franklin because we saw it with Tank Dell. CJ Stroud was like, go get that dude, and he was relevant. And, you know, they didn't invest huge draft capital in Tank Dell. But then uh, Troy Franklin is legitimately Bo Nix's guy. I mean, that is who he threw yeah. to in college. He knows the routes this guy's going to run. If Sean Payton's smart, he's not going to change that too much. Might get it a little bit more nuanced. But, I mean, I think he's kind of a seal to put on the end of your bench there. Thank you, right. Thank you, right. All right, the Broncos are at five and a half, Joe. All right, so they're going to start off the season in Seattle. Then they're going to go to Pittsburgh. And they got the Buccaneers, the Jets, the Raiders, the Chargers, the Saints, the Panthers, the Ravens, the Chiefs, the Falcons, the Raiders again, the Cleveland Browns. They have a bye week, week 14. So watch out for that when you're drafting. And then they go to the Colts, the Chargers, Cincinnati, and Kansas City. Could I see them being 6 and 11? Um. Can't do it, Joe. I gotta go under. Go under. I I can absolutely see where you're going. I'm gonna go over just because I think this team's gonna be feisty enough to actually make some noise. I don't know. They went eight and nine with Russell Wilson, and I honestly think anyone's an improvement over that at this point. The pro the problem I have is you're right, and if Sean Payton goes five and twelve, like I don't. Not good. It's not good if you're getting if you're getting worse instead of better. I mean, he got kind of saddled with Russell Wilson, but at the same time, he knew what he was doing when he took the job. So I don't know. But at the same time, this isn't really a good year to tank. We kind of went over this last week when we were talking about the uh, the, the Patriots and their potential season uh, being bad. Not really a whole lot you can do with this team either because you can't really. There's no one really to tank for. There's good defensive pieces, but this team's defense maybe not the issue. I mean, they they. You can at least see the pieces maybe working out. So, I don't know. This is going to be a weird season for them. But I'm still going under. I'll give them the over. Either way, there's a ton of fantasy football value on this team. I agree with you there because, like, with the Patriots, I didn't see a lot. With this team, at least I can see something. Like, I, I do think you're right about that. And I do think Bo Nix is the kind of quarterback that, like, Sean Payton can, like, mold into what he wants, whereas, like, Russell Wilson's kind of a – already made product can't really change what he's going to do where bonex kind of a malleable guy so i think that there's a chance that this goes a little bit better this season so and yeah, when you look at the right. timing and accuracy of bonex i mean i don't want to compare him to a hall of famer but i mean he kind of does things similarly to drew Brees, which i think peyton absolutely can build an offense around for him that would at least be somewhat competitive it's true all right, let's move on to the Chargers. Joe, good luck figuring out who has been on this team the longest. I think I did the math, and I think Josh Palmer, other than quarterback Justin Herbert, I think Josh Palmer is the one that's been on this team the longest out of everybody there because everyone else either signed or uh, just got there. So, um, actually, yeah, Justin Herbert, 2020, Josh Palmer, 2021. And those are your elder statesmen on this offense. So we'll start with Justin Herbert. QB 17 right now, Joe. He is not even a starter in one quarterback 12-man leagues, according to uh, underdog data right now. That's 131 overall. He's basically free. He's kind of in what the Aaron Rodgers zone has been, you know, kind of the later part of his career where it's like, why would you take all these expensive quarterbacks early when I can get Matt Stafford, Aaron Rodgers at the end of the, you know, end of the league, end of the draft? Well, Justin Herbert's there now. So if you want a Justin Herbert, might be get him a little bit cheaper than you normally would, even though his name value is probably still going to push him up into the, you know, eighth, ninth, tenth round just because of who his name is. But where he has is right now, you can basically get him for free in like the 
12th or 13th round, which I think is kind of crazy. Um, running backs, you got Gus Edwards, you got J.K. Dobbins. Currently, Gus Edwards is RB35, and J.K. Dobbins is currently RB54. Couple of freebies here, too. That's 115 overall and 177 overall. So J.K. Dobbins is basically a waiver wire addition, and Gus Edwards is going in the 11th round. A lot of value there, in my opinion. They're, they're not going to not score touchdowns. Like, I do think we were kind of overanalyzing this offense quite a bit of like, oh, well, they shredded the entire team, so they're going to suck this year. I don't think they're going to be that bad. I mean, that's kind of a crazy overcorrection by the market, I think. And I think it's actually gone the opposite way, where now you're going to be getting these guys at value, whereas you weren't going to do that before. Um Quickly with the wide receivers, we got Lad McConkey, who's currently going as wide receiver 40. He's the highest drafted player right now at 70 overall. Uh, Josh Palmer, wide receiver 56. Quentin Johnson, wide receiver 66. And then Brendan Rice bringing up with wide receiver 91. Um, Josh Palmer's an 11th rounder. The other two are basically free. Again, Justin Herbert doesn't just now suck. Like, he's still a good quarterback. He can still throw the ball. And all of these pieces that he has here are good at catching the ball. I, I, again, think that we way overreacted to Harbaugh getting there, shredding the entire offensive contract so that you could, you know, build this team up. McConkie's going to be my guy. If I'm going to get him in the seventh round, yes, please, thank you. I will. That will be a flex spot for the entire season. Josh Palmer, I also think he he is quite good, Joe, when you actually give him the opportunity. He just hasn't had a chance to show it. Like, I think this is a Nico Collins situation potentially where he just breaks out this year because there's nobody in front of him now. He can be the wide receiver one on this team, um, whereas Lad McConkey will be the slot guy. Then you got Quentin Johnson and Brendan Rice. Listen, QJ had the worst rookie season possible. He's fell in the trail on Burke situation. But we don't know that he's going to be that bad for the rest of his career. So to say that he's wide receiver 66, 14th round, again, a little bit of an overcorrection, right? Like he's got a little bit of of still something in the tank. We don't necessarily know that he's going to be bad. And he was the third person on the team last season behind Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. Um, And then get to the tight ends. Right now it has Will Disley and Hayden Hurst not even listed on underdog as they're starting what tight end. So I'm not really sure they had Donald Parnum, um, but I don't think he's the starter. I think it might be Will Disley or Hayden Hurst. Um, I personally wouldn't take either of them right now, but at the same time, if they're waiver wire options, that is a starting player on a team. And he has, Justin Herbert has shown the ability to use the tight end in the past. Um, But Joe, just overall, this is just insane. Like the, the offense is not going to be this bad. I just don't get it. What do you, what do you think? No, you're absolutely right. I, I think this happens every year. And I think this is very similar to what we saw with the Texans last year. I mean, everyone wrote the Texans off and then CJ Stroud well, comes in there. Rookie. Yeah. But they, they come in there. CJ Stroud comes in there and makes, you know, Nico tank everyone. I mean, Dalton Schultz, I think people were fairly high on, but the same thing's happening here. Uh, I agree with you. There's value across the board. Now we got to monitor into camp a little bit to see what these, how these running backs shake out, because I still think Kamani Vidal could make a run into, especially with JK's health. He could at least have starting snaps or, you know, 40% of the snaps in game at some point in his career. So I do like him. Um, This is a great opportunity also for them to add a running back. So it's going to be really fascinating going into the season if they do just say with Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins, then, I mean, I could see Gus's ADP really jump up there and skyrocket along with yeah. Dobbins. If if the So I think the ADPs for these guys are going to start to rise. Ladd McConkie is already pretty high for a rookie, but I think your take on QJ is absolutely correct. Um, he's He knows that he had the worst drops last year, and he's working to improve that. So... I think that I would be taking a shot on a Trey Palmer or a QJ in a trade just because people are so down on it. Even Justin Herbert. I mean, it depends who has him because the name value alone will keep him elevated a little bit more, which it should. But I think all these guys are a value right now, and you should absolutely be making moves trying to get them. Yeah. No. We we are just speaking to the community at large. We've gone too far. I get it. Like, they did – 
get rid of all the pass catchers. So that means Justin Herbert might not be as good, but he's still good and he can still make these guys work. Like it's not like he's suddenly, you know, he didn't get space jammed. You know, he's not going to lose. He didn't lose all of his talent all of a sudden. Um, and then my one defensive note is that it looks like Junior Colson might actually be the starter over Diane Henley as linebacker. Something to monitor because that's a rookie right there, and I feel bad for everyone that took Dion Henley last season thinking that, oh, well, you've got a built-in guy, right? Like, he's going to get those reps this season. Doesn't look like it. Uh, we'll see. Training camp still has to happen, but I do think they may have figured out that Colson coming from Michigan to play for Harbaugh, I, I think he might have a leg up just – is it called nepotism, Joe, or is it favoritism? I don't know what it's called when you when you take a spot like that, but they do have. I think when you win a national championship together, it becomes family and it becomes nepotism. Yeah, no so. kidding. Which is also why I should have probably mentioned Cornelius Johnson also got drafted in the seventh round for this team, who was on that national championship team too. Um, could mean something. Also, wanted to mention how confusing this is going to be. Now, I get that Quentin Johnston is a different name, but there's also Cornelius Johnson, Leon Johnson, and Jalen Johnson, all wide receivers for this team. So just be careful when you're drafting. You know, I know it says LAC next to the Johnson name. Make sure you're getting who you're getting, who you're, who you're meaning to get, because it can get a little confusing. That's wild. Yeah, a lot, a lot of Johnsons on this team. <laughs> That's all, all I have right. to add to that. Speaking of Johnson, we got eight and a half for the Chargers, Joe. We got a big regression incoming, apparently. Yeah, uh, they got the Raiders, the Panthers, the Steelers, the Chiefs. Then they have a bye week in week five. Broncos, the Cardinals, the Saints, the Browns, the Titans, the Bengals, the Ravens, the Falcons, Kansas City, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Denver Broncos, New England Patriots, and Las Vegas Raiders. Over. Easily. Over. Nine and eight with that schedule? I mean, they get some really bad teams in there. There are some pretty bad teams on there, but yeah, I, I feel like they got. Well, they I forget they did have a top five pick for a reason this year, so I, I am kind of forgetting that. Um, Brandon Staley completely shit the bed last year. I did kind of forget about that. Forgive me out there, folks. I know you're probably saying, uh, "What do you mean regression? This team sucked last year." I, okay, I made a mistake, but I do think nine and eight is completely doable in this uh, league. Uh, I'm going under. I just think there are better teams that they're playing, especially in the division. I think that one's going to be tough. Well, I mean, they're probably taking one of two from the Broncos. They're probably taking one of two from the Raiders, beating the Patriots. I mean, that's three wins right there. I mean, I guess you just got to get six more after that. But I don't know. I just don't think they're that bad. And if they get to nine and eight, by the way, John Harbaugh might win coach of the year because of what he's done with this team. But definitely in the cards. I know that's kind of a weird award, but to come in year one and get this team to the playoffs potentially would be major. But I don't love the Chargers, but I like them a lot more than apparently everyone else does. Yeah, it's and we say it every single year. There's a lot of value on these bad teams. So for sure. It's there. Just gotta look for All it. Right. Speaking of bad teams, Joe, get us to Las Vegas. Las Vegas Raiders. So I think Garner Minshew wins this job pretty handily. Uh, the Raiders have shown absolutely no interest in rebuilding. They went out and signed Christian Wilkins to a massive deal. And Minshew was the top 20 quarterback filling in for Anthony Richardson last year. He definitely kept them competitive. And he is a much better receiving core in Las Vegas. So I think Garner Minshew is a great option for him. I don't think AOC is going to challenge him that much. So we shall see there. The interesting one is that I'm seeing is Zamir White. We've seen his ADP creep up pretty drastically in the last month. He's currently RB21 and 85 overall. As more people become aware of how he finished last year and how the depth chart looks, I think we see him rise into a top 15 running back. I mean, we have Swift, Stevenson, Montgomery, Rashad White. All those guys are currently above him. I could absolutely see him jumping those guys once we get to uh, the season. I mean, with everything else on the roster, he could be a true kind of a bell cow. But I'm leery of taking him much higher than he's currently going because Madison is there. I don't think they can move on without signing another back. So, I mean, a guy like Kareem Hunt, trade for a Khalil Herbert type thing, I could see happening on this team. So, 
I don't think Zamir White is just the guy. I think people are kind of overreacting, and I'm worried that it's going to get a little bit out of hand. So watch out for Zamir White. They also have Dylan Lobby on this team. You know, he might catch a couple passes. No one I'm too concerned about. Uh, Devontae Adams going at wide receiver 12. He finished wide receiver 10 last year. It's a solid spot on the back of the second to get Devontae Adams. Minshew had Michael Pittman absolutely rolling last year, so Devontae Adams should completely do exactly what he did last year, if not a little bit more. And then we have Jacoby Myers, who just seems like a Garner Minshew guy. He's currently going in the 12th round and probably could be a PPR machine too. So I think those two guys are pretty solid. Trey Tucker and Michael Gallup are going to fight over that wide wide receiver three position. I think Trey Tucker wins it, but either guy is essentially undrafted. I do like him for best ball, though, because Trey Tucker put up some pretty big games last year. He does have the speed, especially with all the underneath stuff that the Raiders have to work with. So should be open quite a bit. And then Brock Bowers. This is a fun one to talk about. He's an awesome talent. Awesome talent. But I think he's really going to have to compete with the wide receivers and Michael Mayer, who I don't think is going away. So we're probably going to have to wait a year or two to see Bowers reach his ceiling. He's currently going as tight end 11. And I don't think he's more than number three target in this offense. And that's his absolute ceiling. Uh, Billy, if you think otherwise, let me know. But... <laughs> I think Bowers no, might be a little too rich for my blood at this point. No, he 100% is. I was hoping that he would end up with a team that people he, you know, he could be used more creatively, um, and I don't see Las Vegas as one of those options right now. Yeah, I just think we're dealing with a lot of underneath-type stuff. I mean, I, I don't think there's room for him just to have the middle of the field here. So, No, it, it broke my heart when it was – Las Vegas that took Brock Bowers because they had already taken Michael Mayer last year. And so you're like, okay, this is the Michael Mayer year. Finally, like this, this is a good chance for him to break out. He's got a good quarterback. And then they announced Brock Bowers, which we've seen two tight ends work in the distant past. Like, I think we probably still think of like the Hernandez uh, Gronk thing is like working, but like that is the distant past at this point. Like nobody remembers that that's playing right now. That's young. So two tight ends doesn't typically work. Brock Bowers is an interesting duck for this offense, but you're right. He's going to be in an uphill fight against these wide receivers. Yeah, I think it is. And then on defense, uh, Michael Conce is a guy to monitor. Uh, I think they're going to try to get Tyree Wilson going in year two because they did invest a high first in him, but Conce should have that spot going into camp. So I don't know, flip a coin there. But I think Conce ends up winning, winning that job unless Tyree Wilson does something cool. That's fair. Yeah. Um, all right. Raiders over under is six and a half, Joe. All right. Chargers, Ravens, Panthers, Browns, Broncos, Steelers, Rams, Chiefs, Bengals, week 10 by Dolphins, Broncos, Chiefs, Buccaneers, Falcons, Jaguars, Saints, Chargers. I have them. I have them over. I think they're going to surprise some teams. I do think they're going to surprise some teams. Minshew's frisky, man. Seven. I do and, like Minshew. Was it seven and ten? That seems about right. I think for this roster. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go over with you. I just the only thing I don't love is the. Uh, running backs. I just don't I, I get why people like Zamir White and he was pretty good at Georgia. Didn't blow my doors off though. I didn't think okay, this is a starting running back in the National Football League. But I don't I don't know, maybe. I guess we'll see. Yeah. Like I said, I it's just getting to the point where I think Zamir White's gonna get out of hand come draft season. You're probably right about that. He might be a really good sell high. Especially if he if there's like two nuggets of news coming out of camp, like oh he looks real good, I might just float some trades, try to get him off, land something, get him off my yeah, team, the, land something better. The good thing about this season, like going into next season, this is a hell of a running back class coming up, and I know everyone out there is rolling their eyes because every year is a good running back class until it isn't. This one is legitimately like one of the ones we've been waiting for. Like, there's just so many good players next year. Like, we're we'll probably have two running backs in the first round again. 
Um, but I could definitely see a bunch in the second round too, potentially. So I two in the I first round from the same team. Yeah, potentially. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I could definitely see that. I mean, I think it's both the Ohio State guys and potentially Ollie Gordon from Oklahoma State. I'm not gonna annoy people with college. They roll their eyes when I talk about it anyway. Good thing Josh isn't here, he'd be snoring. All right, let's get on to the World Series champions. That is the Kansas City Chiefs, um, who just cannot stick their nose out of controversy, Joe. Between Rasheed Rice, um, the kicker, who I'm not going to name because he's the butt of everyone's jokes, the butt-ger of everyone's jokes as it is, um, this team just can't get out of the spotlight for bad reasons. Uh, You got Pat Mahomes on the team. He is your tried and true. He's QB4, going 41 overall. Neither Joe or I will have Pat Mahomes on their roster this season because the fourth round is not where you go grab a quarterback, in my opinion, and I'm, Joe agrees with me all the time with that too. So although I get the Patrick Mahomes, plus we live in Missouri, by the way. We're from St. Louis. So we are just proximity enough away since we don't have the Rams anymore to Kansas City where everyone in our home leagues is going to snatch him up way too early anyway because they want to have him on their team. Second round so, every single time. Exactly. Some buffoon will take him in the first round just to be like, my Chiefs, Taylor Swift, quarterback. Like, no. Okay, no, no, no. That's – let's just move that aside. We're not going to take Mahomes. I suggest at 41 you all don't either, but I get it if you really need – this one QB, by the way. Um, I get it if you want it, but he, there is better options out there for a much cheaper price. On to the running backs. You got Isaiah Pacheco, RB12 right now, going 47 overall. I feel that is about right. Um, there's not really anybody challenging behind him. There's Clyde edwards alaire who we've seen enough of. And then everyone else are behind him is a bunch of guys that, like, you wouldn't name them if you gave somebody 100, like, 100 guesses, maybe even a million, Joe. Would you guess Daenerys Prince, Lewis, Reese, Zamet, Hassan Hall? Like, would you name any of these guys? Because I didn't even know they were in the league. Yeah. So Amani Bailey? Easy. You're not going to – call out that that's name either good point Monty bailey i do know that but that's because i'm actually I'm really Denver. interested I'm in Denver. yeah i'm really interested in who comes out of this chief's backfield in tandem with pacheco because well there's a clear spot like path to somebody getting the number two spot so yeah i mean Monty bailey has a, a good chance um as much as anybody so yeah like fair enough but the all's that to say is that isaiah pacheco is your tried and true starter RB12, again, feels about right. Like That is exactly the kind of um, person you're wanting and you're going to want to get. If you're going with the wide receiver options first, zero RB strategy, Isaiah Pacheco would be a good target for you to grab in the third or fourth round. Um, on to the wide receivers, which is a more confusing at times than even the running backs behind Pacheco. So Hollywood Brown's going wide receiver 33, 57 overall. Feels about right because Rasheed Rice, who's going as wide receiver 47, 86 overall, we don't know how long he's going to be suspended, Joe. We know he's going to get suspended. We just don't know for how long. If it's six weeks, I'm probably not touching him. If it's four weeks, this feels about right. 86, that's eighth round. You're going to not have him for four weeks, but you have 13 other weeks to, to do something with. So I would probably do it if it's four. If it's six or longer, I'm probably not touching it with a 10-foot pole. And then is Xavier Worthy, wide receiver 35. He's going right behind Hollywood Brown at 61, where Hollywood Brown's going to 57. I, I've, I've told my feelings about Xavier Worthy. Pat Mahomes has never made a wide receiver that's a rookie good, so we don't really know how this is going to work. I know Pat Mahomes is one of the best quarterbacks of all time. I'm not going to dispute that, but – as far as these wide receivers go, I do think it's just a more of the same mixed bag speedster guys where, like, I do think Xavier Worthy is going to have plenty of games where he proves why you took him in the sixth round. But I think he's, he's going to have plenty of games where he's probably not going to do much. And if that's your starting wide receiver, I think you're going to be upset with how that works out for you. I do think Hollywood has a better chance of getting and taking this number one spot, at least while Rasheed Rice is there. And then when Rasheed Rice is back, that's your one, Hollywood's the two, and then you got Kelsey and Worthy as your three, which Kelsey, by the way, tied in two, going 38 overall. I, if you get Travis Kelsey 
I do think there's a little bit of a slump in coming. Um, last year was not great at times, but he still points per outing was pretty good. Um, I would probably go elsewhere. I'd either get Laporta or I'd wait a little bit on the tight end position. But, um, yeah, Joe, this is a weird offense. Is there anything that you're thinking that I'm not saying? No, I mean, you're pretty much snailing the – absolutely hitting it out of the park. I, I like Hollywood Brown a lot. I'm not ready to buy into it yet, though, because I could see a world where Hollywood Brown is easily a top 20 guy and pretty consistent every week starter for you, wide receiver two. I don't think he quite gets up to wide receiver one, but I think he could be awesome for this team, especially if Rice is out and the chemistry develops a little bit more. But I also really like the value you're getting on Rasheed Rice right now because we saw what he could do last year. If you have room on your team, I mean, he wouldn't be my wide receiver three, but if you get him as a wide receiver four and just let him sit till he's back, that would be ideal. I mean, I'm I'm avoiding Xavier Worthy at that price. I'm completely out. Prove me wrong, please, because I would love to see that work in Kansas City. But I think Hollywood Brown's the same dude that's even better than Xavier Worthy. So the wide receivers are interesting to me. And then, like I said earlier, I don't think Edward Slayer is going to do anything but I would like to see, you know, Deneric Prince I was pretty high on last year. Amani Bailey is going to be my Chiefs running back this year. I think there is room for someone to come in and play, you know, the complimentary role to Isaiah Pacheco. Might be one of them. Yeah. And, like, as far as, like, touchdown distribution on this team, Joe, it's it's very bizarre how many people score touchdowns for this this team last year I went over it I mean there were so many different receivers that caught one or two touchdowns for the team and just listen to this wide receiver core that's behind the the three guys that we mentioned you got Sky Moore he's going to steal some touches Justin Watson always good for like one catch for 15 to 16 yards Kadarius Toney total wild card Justin Ross the chosen one apparently but nobody can actually get him on the field at any time Cornell Powell, who's always been a guy that people talk about, but he's never shown anything. Um, and then you got guys like Phillip Brooks, which I actually like Phillip Brooks quite a bit at Kansas State. I didn't know he was even on this team because he got uh, he was undrafted, but even he's pretty good. So, and then you got, of course, the tight ends that just show up. You got Noah Gray, Jared Wiley, Irv Smith. You got plenty of people that are going to catch touchdowns on this team. They're going to score maybe 24 points a game, so you're not even really like that excited about the touchdown potential here. So I don't know, Joe, I'm never one of the guys that goes after the chiefs uh, players, unless it's Kelsey, this might be another year of that for me, unless I can get Pacheco where, you know, my strategy works out. But other than that, I I think I'm staying away from the chiefs, Joe. I just don't trust them. No, I'm, I'm right there with you. I won't have my homes. I will draft Pacheco if the price is right, but these wide receivers, like I said, I like Hollywood Brown. I could see a way where he could just be an absolute stud each week, but at this price, I think I'd rather go elsewhere. Yeah, I'd much rather like him for DraftKings, potentially. Um, all right, Chiefs over under Joe is 11 and a half. Okay, so they're going to start off with the Ravens, the Bengals, the Falcons, the Chargers, the Saints. Then they have a bye week, week six, 49ers, Raiders, Broncos, Buccaneers, Bills, Panthers, Raiders, Chargers, Browns, Texans, Steelers, Denver. Do you think they get to 12? Mm-hmm. I say no. So I, was, I was more looking at the losses there. And, yeah, I, I think I, I think 11 – I think, like, Vegas probably nailed this one. It's probably going to be 11 and 6 um, for them. And – probably like going to rest the starters for the last week of the season because they probably don't have the one seed, but they probably have, you know, a probably have the division locked up because I I don't think any of these other teams are going to challenge them um, by any stretch for like winning the division. Um, But I think they're going to be a locked in two, three seed in the, in the AFC. And so, yeah, I think that makes them 11 and 6, which would be under, but I don't think they're going to be bad. I don't think that means they're going to be bad. I just think, like, circumstances are saying to me that one of these teams, like the Ravens are going to get, you know, revenge on them. 
Houston's going to come out and have a big game in that matchup because, like, this is their Super Bowl, basically. So, yeah, I do think it's under, but I don't think this is a bad team. No, not at all. I am excited to see Justin Fields dismantle them on Netflix on Christmas Day, though. Very excited. <laughs> fair, fair enough. That is, <laughs> I forgot about that. That is uh, a good point. All right, well, listen, that's AFC West. I don't love this division, Joe. I just don't. I, I it's it's not my favorite any year, but this year it's really not my favorite. Um, I do think the Chiefs are going to win it, not in spectacular fashion. I do think they're going to have some hiccups because the Raiders are good enough to give them a hiccup. The Chargers, I think, are spunky. Like I think people are still back to my Chargers thing. I think people still think the Chargers are coached by Brandon Staley. Like, it's not that guy anymore. Like, I know that you're in your head. You're thinking, oh, we're going to lose a couple goofy ones this year because of the coach. But it's not Brandon Staley. Like, this is Harbaugh, which I'm not saying that's much better necessarily, but, like, it is different. And so I don't think they're going to lose some of those stupid games that they normally lose. Um, And so I think, like, they could beat the Chiefs. And I do think, like, you know, the Broncos are going to be bad. I don't think they're going to be really bad, though. I do think they've got a chance to be decent, like you were making a case for. Yeah, I mean, we know with the Chargers, Harbaugh is going to have them showing up professionally and playing professional football, so we know that's going to be a thing. And the Broncos, I mean, I'm like, believe me, I don't think they're going to be world beaters by any means, but I think there's just enough there that they can at least be competitive. I just think people are way lower on the Broncos than they should be, and the Chargers, and probably the Raiders. No. So, I think, I think you're right about that completely. Um, yeah. So, well, I mean, this kind of leads to my last question, but I think you kind of answered it. Do you think that the Broncos are going to be worse than the Patriots? No. Yeah. I think, I think you're right there. I think you're right as well. Um, I think the Patriots have a better defense. I think that could be, that could be a winning factor for them, but I mean, Denver's not trying to figure out who the worst team is and, Broncos profile as a team that could potentially be one of those bad teams. Just throwing it out there. Oh, they absolutely do. I think they could be a for, in for a top five pick next season. Um, definitely think that's on the table. But that's not bad. The Chargers had that last season. I don't think, again, don't think they're that bad. Um, but, yeah, so that's the AFC West. Very excited to keep talking about this. Uh, these divisions. I, we've gotten two of my – I mean, AFC East was pretty fun. I do kind of like some of the teams there. AFC West, don't love it. Wasn't great. Not my favorite division to talk about. But we are going to get to some divisions, especially the AFC South, that I like quite a bit. So um, can't wait to talk about that. We are talking about the AFC South next week, Joe, which, I mean, hopefully Josh will be back for. Maybe he'll opt into this one um, instead of opting out like he did with uh, this podcast. But – yeah, do you have any closing thoughts that you need to get off your chest? Any golf-related stuff you want to talk about? Um, got my swing back. It's feeling pretty good. Went through a went through a tough month there, but uh, got it figured out. So that's really good. Um, that's good. I know. Wise, I remember when when me and you went to play, you were quite down on yourself about your golf ability, which I was like, "Well, you're still out shooting the hell out of me." So I don't know how how bad you can feel about it. It, it was pretty rough there for a while. It, I felt like a uh, octopus falling out of a tree. It's the best way to explain wow. that. Um, I mean, golf wise, we got the Open Championship coming up here. That should be exciting. Yeah, that'll be fun. So, yeah, fair enough. All right, well, Joe, for offensive points, get us out of here. Good night. Good day. Thank you for watching the IDP Plus YouTube network. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Be sure to tap the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload new content.